Hi, I'm John McLoon. I'm a Director of Technical Services at Wolfram Research in Europe. And I'm going to spend about an hour of this, this series of videos introducing the main concepts of machine learning and showing you enough to be able to get uh, started straight away doing your own machine learning on your own data. Now, the reason I think I can do that is I'm going to be doing this in the Wolfram language where there's an awful, awful lot of automation to make machine learning much easier to do, with much less effort and much less technical knowledge. So all you need is the main concepts and the very basics of, of programming ability. So because I'm in the Wolfram language, let me start by quickly introducing some key syntax elements that uh, will help you to be able to read the code that I'm going to show throughout these videos. You can find more at reference.wolfram.com. That'll show you all of the details of the language. But here's the, the three key elements you need to be able to read as you look at the examples that every time we use a function in the language, it has a name which is capitalized and the arguments are surrounded by square brackets and commas. And, uh, and all kinds of data can be passed in regardless of whether that's uh, numbers or text or images. Uh, data is grouped together using curly brackets, these braces. And anything that's a key value pair, they're associated using an arrow which you type with a minus and a greater than sign. And that's really all you need to know for the basics of the syntax of the language. So let's get on to the basics of the machine learning, which is what we're here to discuss. First of all, let me try and oversimplify a little bit. What is machine learning? Well, if you've done any mathematics with data, you'll have done the most sort of elementary machine learning already by taking data and doing something like fitting a straight line to it. And in a sense, that's the, that's the simplest kind of machine learning because the machine has to learn these two parameters that make that line align with the data. And the idea is then that once you've got a model to describe the data, you can start doing things like interpolating the missing values or extrapolating what might happen next. But of course, doing a straight line fit linear regression isn't really very good machine learning. And the, there's two reasons for that. One is it requires human intervention to think about what that model is. I've chosen a straight line here, but maybe a straight line isn't very good fit for some kinds of data. And as a human, you have to rethink that and inject intelligence to decide what it is you're trying to fit. Now, of course, you can, uh, you can do that. You can change the model you fit, and sometimes you can get better fits to, to different kinds of data. But the other problem with fitting is that if you uh, start adding too many parameters, you get what's called overfitting, where the fit gets better in the sense that it's closer to the data. But in terms of trying to predict what happens, it gets worse because what you're really fitting is the noise, the errors in the data, rather than fitting the underlying essence of, uh, of whatever the data is describing. So what machine learning really is, it's a collection of techniques that are more adaptive without human intervention and, and at the same time resistant to these overfitting problems. But in the end, it's the same kind of outcome we're trying to achieve. You want to take some data and you want to create a model that encapsulates the essence of what's going on in the data in a way that is as automated as possible. 